Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I thought that I would talk about something a little bit different today. I wanna to talk about safe weight loss and when you've lost the weight that you want, how you can maintain it. Some of you who have been with me a while will know that last September I sort of went on it wasn't a diet. I don't agree with diets. I don't like diets. They're short-term solutions. You normally end up putting on all of the weight once you go back to normal anyway. So I don't really do diets. But last September, I went on like more of a healthy eating lifestyle change. I lost a total of a stone and a half. I'm feeling good. Like everything in the wardrobe fits again, which is amazing. Now that I've plateaued in my weight and it's stayed consistent. I thought that now would be a good time to share with you what's worked for me. If maybe you're looking to lose weight, maintain it. Actually, even if you're looking to put it on, this solution would work. The first thing to say is if you are looking to lose weight and you can't lose weight, it's not coming off or you're gaining. I feel like for pretty much all of us, the first thing to automatically presume is I've either got to be ill or it's a hormone imbalance or the scales are lying or slow metabolism or whatever it is. Honestly, it comes down to the fact that we're eating more calories than we're burning off. It is the inconvenient truth the thing that worked for me was this. Last September, I was 10 and a half stone. I was like a UK dress size 12, nothing wrong with that. But for me, I didn't feel good at that weight. And none of my clothes fitted. The other reason why I decided to do it is I work from home and I was in quite an unhealthy routine of skipping breakfast and eating like a calorie high junky lunch and then the same thing for dinner because I was time poor and I just wanted to eat and then get back on with my work. So I sort of wanted to change up anyway because my sleep wasn't great, I was feeling a bit groggy. I got the MyFitnessPal app, I just used the free version. When you get it, you program in your height, your current weight, the amount of energy you exert in the day, whether you're sat at a desk or whether you are walking around quite a lot and you put in the weight that you'd ideally like to be. The app like thinks about it and it tells you based on what you're doing in the day, what what calories you should be consuming. Every time you eat something, you scan the barcode, it deducts it off your calories. If you do any exercise or if you walk, it adds it to your calories. If you go over, your calories at the end there go red. If you're under or on target, they stay green. It's a really easy way to stay on track. Between September and December last year, I lost a total of one stone. I could eat what I want. Everything was great. Then between December and February, I lost the other half a stone. When you get to your target weight, you program it into the app and it readjusts the calories so that you don't put on and you don't lose any, you just stay where you are. That, in a nutshell, is what I've been doing. In March this year, I went through a couple of weeks where I just noticed the weight was creeping back on again, even though I was sticking to the app. I just started seeing like a couple of pounds go on here and there. And I was talking to my friend who also is on the app and we follow each other. And I was like, I don't know why, but I'm like putting on weight. And I didn't want to believe it was because I was maybe eating too much. So what I did was I went onto Amazon. I bought a set of scales. They turned up the next day and you know something, my idea of what 30 grams worth of cereal looked like was nearer 50 or 60 grams. I couldn't believe it and as soon as I got the scales, my eyes were opened to that's the reason why. It's because you're guessing on the amount of food that you're putting into a bowl or you're home cooking. Even if you have a coffee in the day that's got a sugar in it, that is calories. Calories from drinks, I think, are one of the worst things because you don't class a drink as food, but they can have, in some instances, as much calories as like a chocolate bar or a packet of crisps or something. There are certain times where I don't use the app either, so you don't have to be tied to it. After you've been using the app for a certain period of time, you get used to, you just sort of remember, oh yeah, for breakfast I'm gonna eat 200 calories, for lunch I'm gonna have 400. You just sort of work out in your mind how you choose to split up your calories throughout the day. I'm gonna show you what I eat in the average week because this has been a really big change for me. So starting with breakfast, previously I either used to have no breakfast or something really small, which would mean come 11 o'clock, I was like a hungry fox in a dustbin. What I now have, 40 grams of porridge, which in the US is known as oatmeal. I don't have any sugar or any sweetener on it. You can add milk or like an almond milk if you want. Just make sure that you incorporate the calories of that. For me personally, milk makes me sick and I've tried it with almond milk and I don't like it. So I just have it with boiling water poured on top. Then what I have with that is I have one of these. These are so yummy and if 
you're allergic to dairy, you can eat these and they're really tasty. These are yogurts made out of coconut. I pretty much like the vanilla one, but there's one that's really good. It's Morello Cherry and it's so yummy. Another tip, if you want anything sweet in the day, put these in the freezer and you can eat them like ice cream. I have the yogurt with the porridge because if I have the porridge on its own, within sort of about an hour, I'm not hungry, but I almost have like a low blood sugar feeling. And I've always got that with porridge for some reason. So if I combine it with a yogurt like this, the yogurt's pretty high when it comes to fat and protein. So it really keeps me going right up until lunch, really. The other options that I might have in the week are cereal. This is the cereal that I'm really liking at the moment. It's called Protein Crunch. It's high in protein. It's also quite high in sugar though. So that's something that you need to bear in mind. I do have this with one of those yogurts as well. This is probably out of the three breakfasts I'm gonna show you, this is my least favorite because I find that it doesn't keep me as full as the other two. I will typically have this on a day where I get up later and therefore I'm gonna have lunch a bit sooner. Or on days, you know when you wake up in the morning and you feel like you want sugar? I know it's different for everyone, some people avoid sugar, but for me, I don't mind it in my diet, all in moderation. Then the final breakfast, and this is my favorite out of all three, but I only do this in the morning when I've got time. Get yourself some of this bread. I don't buy white bread because if I did, I would eat it all the time. But what I do is I get this. It's seeded bread that is wheat free. I toast it. Then I have one or two poached eggs on top, which I just put some salt and pepper on. It keeps you going out of all of the breakfast that I've shown you. This one keeps me going the longest. Lunch, right. I wanna show you here where I used to go wrong and where I think possibly quite a few of us do. I'm gonna show you the average meal deal that you can get in the UK. Typically you can get these in anywhere from like boots to supermarkets. And when I worked in an office, these were the types of things that I used to run out, buy quickly, cause it was cheap and it was like all in one. I'd go and eat it and then I felt pretty sluggish and rubbish and within a couple of hours I'd be hungry again. Now I'm gonna compare it to something that's less calories, it's a healthier option. This keeps me going for a lot longer. Every evening, particularly in spring and summer, I make up a really big, finely chopped up salad. I cut it up really thin, almost like tabbouleh, and I do like lettuce, tomato, peppers, cucumber, some spring onions. I normally have that for my dinner, and I have an unlimited amount. I eat as much of it as I want. Anything left I have for lunch the next day. And you can add things to it like, you can add grains and seeds. They will give you that complex carbohydrate that's gonna keep you going longer. Then things that I like to add to it, which again, really fill me up and keep me going, are either things like this, these are some prawns, and I also have things like squid as well. I'll eat the whole packet of this, mixed in with a salad. Calories are really low, protein's really high. About four o'clock in the afternoon, I'll normally have a snack, and the things that I eat are either prawns or some chicken, just on its own. Or the other thing that I really like, great for when you're out and about and you're really busy, but they're these protein balls that are called Bounce. Chuck them in your handbag. They're really good to have if you don't wanna go and eat something too junky, but you need like a quick snack. It feels like you're having a cake because it feels like it's got sugar in it, but they're sugar free. They're really tasty and they keep you going as well. So we'll have something like that at about four o'clock. Personally for me, dinner is my largest meal of the day. If you were gonna do this properly, you probably rebalance it so that breakfast and lunch were larger. But the reason why this for me is the bigger one is because it's the one point in the day that Dave and I get to sit down, spend some time with each other. And so we like to have something substantial and nice to eat. Typical things that I'll go for, I'll have like one of those big salads that I was telling you about, maybe some brown rice. These are pre-packaged, healthy type foods that well, I get from Waitrose, but you can get them pretty much from any supermarket. So these meals are pretty good for us because we're busy, we don't have time to cook, neither of us are very good cooks. It's fresh, good food, it's not junky at all. I'll also have a glass of wine with my dinner as well, and they're all things that you can do that fit within the calories, that fit within your lifestyle. That is what I eat in a week. I did leave out the takeaway, only because when I filmed this, it wasn't a Friday and I didn't have the takeaway to show you, but I normally have a takeaway on a Friday. It's not a diet and it's never felt like a diet. I get days where I go over and I get other days where I'm bang on target and I get a few days where I'm under. It's all about moderation. One of you sent me a question actually, and it was to do with, let me see if I can find it. It was to do with you'd um, started doing my fitness pal and you were in the first couple of weeks of it and you were finding that you were really hungry all the time and what did I recommend? It's really normal in the first couple of weeks. If you've been going from not eating a lot and you wanna 
build up what you're eating or eating a lot and you want to bring it down it's so normal okay don't worry about it and you've just got to grit your teeth and sort of work through it and trust me by the time i got to the end of the first week i was feeling a bit more aligned the other thing that really worked for me as well is i found that i was more hungry at certain times of the day so for example when i first started doing this by about day three i worked out that late afternoon and dinner i would be starving but early in the morning i could forego breakfast so what i did in the first couple of days is i would delay breakfast and I would sort of have like an early lunch, which gave me more calories to have towards dinner. Another thing you can do is exercise. The more exercise that you do, when you add it into the app, it gives you credit for the exercise that you've done. So if you find that you are hungry, try and distract yourself, maybe try and delay the time that you eat, I've been doing this thing recently where I show you at the end of the video what I'm wearing and it seems to be something that you like. This top, this is new. Check it out, look at the back of it. I really like it, it's actually quite low cut. So I wore like, um, just like a, a, a top underneath it. But the sleeves on it are so nice and it's so well made. And then the jeans that I'm wearing, I think these are like guys jeans. They're for women, but they're like a guys cut. They're Levi, they're sort of quite slouchy. And then my shoes are these. These are, um, I think you saw these earlier in the year. These are from Christian Louboutin. Incredibly comfortable. They've got 100 millimeter heels. So they're not too stupid to walk in. And then jewelry, I've got um, a little pearl bracelet, an Hermes cuff, this T-bar cuff, which is from, um, where's it from? Swarovski. I've had so many people think that's real, <laughs> which is really good. Then on my other wrist, this is the watch that I'm wearing today. I've got quite a few of these watches, but I wanted to wear this one because it's black, but it's the gold details on the front I thought worked quite well with the bangles and the bracelets that I'm wearing. And that is everything. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.